Good pub feed. Hello there, and welcome to the Lock In Quiz. All of the fun of the trivia night down your local with, let's be honest, uh, quite a lot of key details different. Huge amounts of fun to play, huge amounts of fun to watch. Not a lot of fun to edit, but that's not our problem or yours. Every week we are here with three guests playing along, and you two can and must play along at home. I'm your host, Ivo Graham. So our first round, as it should be, is general knowledge. I would ask the three of you, uh, and indeed anyone playing at home, to make sure that you have a pad of paper and a pen. A pen for the contestants here to write in quite large letters in case you need to hold it up to the screen for banter. Um, or, or indeed, just for evidence. Um, question one. How many scoring zones are there on a conventional oh. dartboard? Let's hear the back chat. It's a very vague sounding question. And well, I don't yeah, really okay, know so. how I do. Yeah, here we go, Reese. So if we're in, let's say you hit a 20, right? You've yes. got the option to hit a 20 in that first bit or the bit below. The bits on either side of the treble count as different scoring zones. Oh, oh, God. oh God. Different God. zones. Right, yeah, I got that. So there's different zones. Oh, shit. Okay. There's That's different zones, and I've also given away the fact that a treble exists. Picture a dartboard, have a lovely time. I'll tell you, here's a, here's a fun little insight. Okay, if the dartboard was on Microsoft Paint and you were using the fill uh, tool to fill up a segment <laughs> by colour, how many times would you have to click fill? Absolutely delighted so, with that. Thanks very much for coming. This is for two points. Which two dances are used as words in the NATO phonetic alphabet? Lovely. We all know and love the NATO phonetic alphabet. Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. A little bit of showboating from me there. Um, and I've given away three <laughs> uh, words in the NATO alphabet which are not dances. So I've, I've narrowed it down there for you. Have you never done the Bravo before? It's a fantastic dance, that. Um, it's really an classic. improv riff which we just don't have time for. Um, I do, yeah, I do the Bravo riff at eight PM every Thursday night outside my home for the NHS. Uh, question three. <laughs> question three is about fingernails. Thank goodness, uh, and also about death. Uh, it's a true or false. Fingernails continue to grow after you die. True or false? Lovely to have a fifty-fifty this early. <laughs> Question four, uh, speaking of death, which Italian Renaissance painter, they're all dead, uh, sketched designs for both a helicopter and an aeroplane? Which Italian Renaissance painter sketched designs for both a helicopter and an aeroplane? Wonder if we'll ever use either of those again. <laughs> God, I miss helicopters. Uh, so that was a question about the Italian Renaissance painters. I'll be honest, it's, it's the big one, uh, but no clues. Question five, <laughs> there are five letters in Scrabble that have only one tile. Name them all. And it's one point for correct answer. So it's a, it's a brutally disproportionate level of importance, this question. It's a point for each film. Wow. God. God. If it's on the board, there's not another one coming out of the bag. I'll rephrase it. What are the five rarest letters in the English language? Without any further ado, I'm going to ask uh, the four of you to wrap things up as we move to the answers for round one. And the same goes for everyone watching at home. Uh, pens down. Question one, and we all remember this one very fondly, it's the dartboard one. How many scoring zones? Okay, remember Microsoft Paint, remember the good times, and the answer is 82. Yay! You've got 20 numbered, 20, well, I don't have to explain, you've all got it right, you did the maths you needed to do, and we can move on with our lives. Question two, which two dances for two points are used as words in the NATO phonetic alphabet? Foxtrot and Tango. Question three was the old fingernails question. True or false, fingernails continue to grow after you die. And that is false. It's an urban myth. It's an old wives' tale. Did anyone put true? Yeah, I've been conned. You have been conned, Amy. Who do you think told you that, if you had to lay the blame at someone's door? Um, I'm going to go Uncle Brian. 
He's a liar. Uncle Brian. He's um, liar. Still alive? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> He's dead as his fingernails. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> I hope no one's been attending to him and trimming his fingernails every week. <laughs> As per his explicit but unnecessary instruction. <laughs> Question four. Which Italian Renaissance painter sketched designs for both a helicopter and an aeroplane? It is, of course, Leonardo da Vinci, the big dog of the Renaissance. And finally, number five, which five letters in Scrabble have only one tile? And the answers are J, K, oh. Q, X, and Z. Ooh. No! What Sorry, error has been made? I, I made oh some cross, cross out Z. I got you made some cross. Just leave the sentence there, mate. You made some cross. <laughs> and what, um, what did you put instead of Z? Uh, we had Y and V in there as well. Yeah, I'd Serious be feeling pretty bars, livid with yeah. my partner at this point. Um, Phil, how many did you get out of five for these Scrabbles? I got four out of five. I said V instead of J, which was stupid. A lot of people have been <laughs> sucked into this V whirlpool. So this round is out of five. In each question, there will be three uh, household name sort of items. And all I want you to do is say which decade all of them first appeared. Uh, John is called Roisin on the screen and performed behind a mask of either Roger Taylor or John Deacon. It's John Deacon. Come on, man. Sorry, John. Come on. Sorry. I, I saw the Queen film on a boat. Uh, oh, was, Yeah. I was going to um, France on a ferry and we watched the Queen film. Well, do you want to know a fun fact, Tim? Just the one, please. Uh, Queen filmed the song Breakthrough, the music video on a train, and uh, just so happens I've got a framed picture of that uh, of that train. Oh. And that, 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 I tell you what, I'll hold my hands up. That's a fun fact. Thank you. Question one in the Guess a Decade round. In which decade did the, and there's lovely pictures of all of them, the audio cassette, the handheld calculator, and... AstroTurf first get introduced. By the way, <coughs> word to the wise, it's always one decade earlier than you think. Right. Don't be lured. Don't be lured. This is luring chat. I think Tim's actually trying to be helpful there. Classic lured victim <laughs> chat. <laughs> <laughs> I just keep going back. Um, Off to a flame. So in what decade would you first expect to have come across an audio cassette, a handheld calculator, and uh, some AstroTurf? I'm ever so sorry, Ivan. I think you're a fantastic quiz master, but none of us asked you to repeat that one, did we? <laughs> <laughs> you're right. What I'll do is I'll ask a very similar question with three different items. Question <laughs> two. In which decade would you expect to have come across sunglasses, cheeseburgers, and bubble gum? I'm going to go two decades earlier this time. Two decades earlier than your guess for the previous one? Or two, two... Uh, two decades earlier than I think. I'm always trying to stay ahead of himself and his own instincts. I'm just trying to imagine your, your, you know, your, your Hitlers and your Roosevelts having a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> Not together. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to stop doing that, Tim, and uh, concentrate on the quiz. I've been imagining that for about three rounds now. <laughs> like a stopped clock. <laughs> Question three. In what decade were paintballing, DNA profiling, and CD-ROMs all introduced? Are you enjoying this round, John Robbins? Do you know what? It's a very well-selected round, and I think it makes it's disconcerting because you think it's easy because they're all relatively recent. If, the, if this was like the Magna Carta the sinking of HMS Blythenshire, you'd be Not taking a stab in the dark, but I've got a horrible feeling I'm wrong on each one. HMS Blythenshire was actually sunk by paintball, if that helps you. <laughs> Question four, in which decade were air conditioning? Is it in which decade was stretching? <laughs> <laughs> no, she's having a lovely stretch, but it's what she's enjoying mid-stretch, Tim. The mag. 
no, not no, not that either. It's the air conditioning. Of course, it is air con. What's the mag? She's got a mag on her lap, hasn't she? Difficult to tell whether it's a fold of the dress or not. Luckily, it's irrelevant. In which decade were air conditioning, aeroplanes, and teddy bears all introduced? Teddy bears and air conditioning in the same year. Are you absolutely sure? Decade. Did I say year? No, are you sure it's the same decade? Well, I've been given this information in good faith, so yes. Okay, teddy bears pretty old. It's like they always say, teddy bears more recent than you think, aeroplanes older than you think. Meet in the middle. Question five, the final question in this round is, in which decade were barcodes, hula hoops, and diet soda introduced. And as we can see from the picture, that's Hula Hoop, the uh, exercise tool. Right, I've changed my tactics. I'm going for the decade I think this one's in. <laughs> An emotional journey for Tim Key, who has learned to trust his instincts, or just in isolation decided they're right on this occasion. I've learned to trust my instincts in isolation. That's, my, that's been my journey the last month. Let's get on to the answers, because I'm sure they'll be problematic. Now, question one in the Guess a Decade round. In which decade were the audio cassette, AstroTurf, and handheld calculator all introduced? Tim Key? 1960s. Absolutely correct. You were right not to... Damn it! Say. What, do you put 70s, Roche? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what I'm talking about! Look at that. He wasn't messing with your head. He was holding your hand. Question two. In which decade were sunglasses, cheeseburgers, and bubblegum introduced? The answer was Roisin. 20s! Correct. The jubilant turn of a correct answer. Tim Key's got that one wrong. John Robbins has got that one. I crossed out, twen I crossed out 30s, then wrote 20s, then crossed out 20s, then wrote 30s. Mm. Lots of different lessons being learned here. re instincts. Question three. Paintballing, DNA profiling, CD-ROMs, all introduced in the 1980s. Yes! No. It's a I thought it was late. I thought it was one of those later than you think. I said 90s. Nine, no, they were, they were paintballing in the 80s, Roisin. Damn it. I just thought PJ and Duncan, you know? I thought they brought, they brought it over. They, um, yes. Thank you, PJ and Duncan, for all that you've done for paintballing, if not its safety requirements. Question four. <laughs> in which decade were air conditioning aeroplanes and teddy bears all introduced. John Robbins, we'll go to you because you're not happy about the question. Well, I'm not happy. I, I assumed that uh, teddy bears were Victorian. And what did you put? I put 1910s because air conditioning pushed me forward somehow. It should have pushed you a little bit back to 1900. I got it! Which you'd have to say is it's just about Victorian. It's Teddy Roosevelt, isn't it? He had he named teddy bears are named after Teddy Roosevelt. Good knowledge. He went to, he, he, they went to get him to hunt bears, and then he um, he he got there and they handed him like a baby bear, and he was oh my god, and they put a photo up saying Teddy's bears because he wouldn't shoot them. Right, rings a bell actually. That's knowledge, Roisin. Uh, it's lovely of you to provide us with all this bonus information, but I have to ask you, what decade do you think barcodes, hula hoops, and diet soda were introduced in? I would say the 50s. You'd say it right. It was the 1950s. It's been a great round for Conaty. Well, no, I've got two wrong. Oh, it's, it's been a mediocre <laughs> round for Conaty. How's it been for Tim? Uh, three rights, two wrong. Three rights, two wrong. John Robbins. Two right, three wrong. Um, round three is a bit of, and I don't know how this is going to fare, Name the country. <laughs> no. Difficult to tell. Not on a map, about. surely. I'm, ah. not on a map, I'm afraid Come on. we are going to. I expected two things from all of you today excellence and positivity, and <laughs> it has been a quiz lacking in both. <laughs> let's look at these outlines and let's try to get along. Question one Where's this? Oh, uh, yeah. Ah, well, I, I said they'd be disembodied. Um, I've got that wrong. You are actually looking at them on the map, which makes it, I would say, it's a bit easier, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. I say significantly easier. I'm looking at question two now. Here's question two. Oh, that is. Hmm. Country number three. Where is this? Oh. Our second 
Asian adventure. I think it's. I think there's something rather pleasing about just looking at this yeah. the gold map of the world, watching the arrow jump around. I think it's. I think it's nice. It reminds um, us of air travel. It feels. It feels. It feels the closest that any of us will ever come again to air tra- yeah. travel. <laughs> uh, question four: Where is this? Yeah, that's that's a country. It's terrific to have that um, replied by Jenny, actually. And you'll find that it's not uh, the UN do not recognise it. Imagine if the UN <laughs> imagine if that was if that was breaking news. Um, when was this map put, made? No, see this is exactly the sort of question. Oh here we go. Yeah. <laughs> he spotted something. Yeah, what's what's it, it what is it Paul, Paul, a, a sort of a border change or, or a tectonic shift? <laughs> what's your beef? Oh come on to this. Alright. Oh. Um, well let's do a quick question five. Where's that? That is. Yeah. yeah. Say it's a country, Jenny. Be still, my beating heart. I'm going to silence from Jenny Ryan. Not rising to the bait. All right. Oh, no, I've changed my mind on it now. We'll skip straight on and do some answers. Question one was, I think. Mongolia? It was Mongolia. Hey! The round. What a relief. Two. Anyone want to have a swing at this? Chad. It is Chad. Jenny, oh, you Chad? No. Nice. I've put... changed from Sudan at the last second. Where is this third country then? It's the and largest oh. producer of rubies in the world. Myanmar or Burma? Yes. Uh, that's exactly right. We'll accept Myanmar or Burma. Question four was anyone want to have a go at where this is in South America? It's Bolivia? Bolivia? It's Paraguay. Yeah. Yes. It, uh, yes. It's Agony. some landlocked thing. Agony. See, there's two Agony. countries there that are landlocked. It's next to Bolivia. The Damn it. My friend just got my friend just got made ambassador to Paraguay. That's not going true. over there in September. He's the this Paraguayan is, is now the. This British is the difference between pointless and the chase. Not <laughs> once have any of Bradley's mates been promoted to those sorts of positions of power. <laughs> I went for the other landlocked country, which is Bolivia. I'm sorry to hear that, Richard. Yeah, sad. If if, uh, if your friend's got any spare invites to Paraguay, get Jenny Ryan on the plane and show her the error of her ways. Yeah, I'll, I'm sure everyone's, I'll, I'll check with them, but I'm sure everyone's welcome. Have you got any diplomatic contact in Eastern Europe, Richard? Now, this is an interesting one, isn't it? Because I was choosing between three. Take us through. And them. I don't know if everyone else was. It was between Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Or Those are the three. And what did Those you go for? Three. I went for Lithuania. You were wrong. What did you go for, Jenny? <gasps> Estonia. You were correct. Paul, did you go with oh. Estonia? The clue was how close it is to Finland. Tallinn, ah. 80 miles across the Gulf of Riga from Helsinki. I've literally oh. never had a, I've never had an outlet for this one liner, so we may as well bash through it now. I'll tell you what, do you know the capital of Estonia? Now, that would be Tallinn. Tried it once nice. gig, and it was met with, uh, I'd have to say, rage, actually. Um, <laughs> uh, I crossed out Estonia. Um, I ended a series of pointless once when it was about Moldova. They, I said, they, they think it's Moldova, it is now. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's, uh, that's lovely. Not really how you pronounce it, but it's... Uh, <laughs> it, would have, it would have slotted very nicely into yeah. my European capital's uh, joke dying a death medley, Richard. <sighs> Gutted about that. Um, so at the end of uh, round three, which again we've all not really enjoyed, uh, but we have learned a little bit about Richard's contact in, in South America, um, and that was what we all really wanted to get out of this. Now, what we do now in the Lockin Pub quiz is we come to a commercial break, but we like to give the contestants, both the ones here and the ones at home, a big fat ten pointer to chew over during the commercial break. So this round, it's one question, but it's ten points, and that question is: What are the top ten? Longest running musicals of all time in the West End. Ivo Man. So you want it's 10 answers? We want 10. <laughs> they don't have to be in the right order. We want 10 so musicals. They can still be running? Yes. Uh-huh. No. Most they have to be running no, now. They can't still be running now. No, no, no. Of, just of um, the longest runs of all time. And they don't have to be in the right order? They don't have to be in the right order. Okay. Okay. I think I know what you're looking for. Okay. Let me just check. Uh, okay. Looking at the list. Yes, a few of them have ended. That's a clue, but I, I, it's one I'm happy to give. 
Do you know a musical I really enjoy, Ivo? I don't know if you've seen it. Go on, Tim. It's not It's not on this list. I won't be guessing, though. No. Come From Away. What's it called? From, Come From Away. Fantastic. Who's in it? It's not about that. Um, oh, all right. It's about um, the when the planes were brought down after 9-11. Oh, and they plane. get to Canada. They all have to. Yeah. The, yeah. Fantastic. What sort of thing are they singing in the middle of that? Uh, they sing songs from Les Mis. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tim. Yes. We chat about this further during a promotion for Steve Martin and Martin Short's rescheduled UK tour dates. Fantastic. I love Father of the Brain. Not an idiot. How many dates is it, Ivo? Uh, I don't know, and I don't think I have to know. Two. Two dates at the Royal Albert Hall. So one of the shortest running musicals at the West End. <laughs> All I played is a good pub feed. Welcome back to the Lock-In Pub Quiz. Before that commercial interlude, we asked the quizzers here and you quizzers at home to name the top 10 longest running West End musicals of all time. Uh, and those 10 are, give yourself a point for each one you got right. Number one, The Big Boy, Les Mis. Yes. Number two, Phantom of the Opera. Yes. Number three, Blood Brothers. Wanker! <laughs> it, was, it wasn't going to be a popular one, but you'll only be swearing at yourself if you haven't put cats. Yes. Which is number four. Number five, Mamma Mia. Here we go again. Yes. Uh, number, it's just called Mamma Mia. That was a flourish from me and I won't do it again. Number six, The Lion King. Oh! Number seven, Starlight Express. Oh my God. Now things might be getting a bit tense here for John Robbins and the masks he's been wearing at various points during this quiz. John, have you written down, We Will Rock You? Of course I have. I can Damn tell it. you it's number 11. No, I don't, be I don't believe that that's true. It's got bumped, John. It has got bumped by Chicago, yeah. Wicked, and this is really going to hurt, The Buddy Holly Story. Oh, fuck off. It's all that. We Will we Rock, rock you. you ran for like 11 years. Is yes. Greece not there? No, if, then, if I haven't said them, they're not there. Roisin, I'm going to deal with Queen, but I'm not going to deal with Greece. We're so, short. No, Tyvo? Yes. Sorry, is Barnum not there? No. I don't actually believe you. Listen to me, John. Listen to me for the last time. We Will Rock You was performed 4,659 times between 2002 and 2014. The Buddy Holly Story was performed 5,140 times between 1989 and 2003. It was a close run thing, sure. But in the end, the points go to Buddy. How many points did you get in that round, Tim? Five. Roisin, how many points did you get in that round? Six. Six. And John Robbins querying the questions for the second round in a row. What did you get? My tripod's broken and I got four. <laughs> Two bits of bad news there. What are you holding your laptop up with? I'm holding my phone in my hand. Guys, it's all change. I've just had a text from Alex to say I can take the iPad back tomorrow. That means I can drink now. What are you talking about? Oh, all my night. God. It's, it's all changed. Oh, hello. Should we have a little look in here? It sounds like he's got a beer fridge in his great 
recently remortgaged house. Oh, hello to you, my liege. My love of my life, you've hurt me. You've stolen that's, that's, my love. The whole thing is slightly undercut by the fact that it says Roisin next to you. Other than that, fair play. <laughs> oh, mate of my mate, heart of my realm. I'm, I getting love it when... bit, I'm getting a new bit of cardboard, Ivo, to write my answer on. Thanks, Tim. The music round. Our friend, the very dear and very talented Michael, is going to play five songs on his stylophone, and you will get half a point for naming the artist and half a point for naming the song. So Michael, whose face we shall not see, all the better to concentrate on his hands and on his talent, take it away with song number one. Okay, let's let's go now to the second question. Could you repeat that? Oh, Craig, it was long. I know. I mean, listen, I'm playing along and I'd like to have another go at that, but we are a bit pressed for time. Deborah, would you like a repeat? I mean, yeah, do you know what? I will for, it's not going to help me, but I will for Craig, yes. Thank you, Deborah. I'd love a repeat for Craig. Thank you, Deborah. Okay, we will repeat this one, but I'm not sure we're going to repeat all of them. Michael, let's, let's have it again, please. Just a little, maybe even a sting from that. I did. That did help me, Craig. I, I'm glad it helped you. So Craig has inadvertently just given a point to Deborah there. Agony. <laughs> I'm I'm fine with that. Well, I didn't get that one either, Craig. So I, I, I'm 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 with you in that sense. Um, I mean, I might, that it's probably wrong. At the first time, I thought it was away in a manger, so it's probably wrong. Imagine if they were all carols. Let's move on to. Song number three, Michael, please, if you would. possibly flummoxed by the lengthy repetitive intro, I then grasped it in the final seconds. Uh, Michael, let's hear that fourth bleepy sound. Amazing. Uh, Joe Dudridge is coming up. Um, uh, annoying. I, I know that, but I don't know it. Um, there we go. That's the rub. We've had four terrific renditions. Here is the fifth and final. I could hear Michael singing along. I can tell you that I have two points, but that's irrelevant. Michael's done a, a sterling job uh, as ever, and these were the songs he was playing. Question one, I can tell you, was Paint It Black by the Rolling Stones. 
who headlined Glastonbury in 2013. Joe, presumably you were there doing some ketamine. <laughs> no, but I, I, I feel like I might have just done some because I thought that was ABBA, uh, that last one, so I feel uh, quite embarrassed. Still yet I to headline really Glastonbury. Prefer, I would really prefer if you called it the Christmas of Summer. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, ABBA, of course, yet to headline the Christmas of Summer. Let's um, move on to question two. I didn't get this. I wish I had. It was, I want to know what love is by Foreigner. Wow, 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 wow. Great well choice. Done. Deborah, did you get I it? Mean, I didn't get I did. it. Well done, Deborah. Uh, I did. But I only I, got it, Craig, because of your re... Because of your... Because he just yeah. made a sting from it. Because of that, do you think I can I have half it. a point? No, we you can't. You can have half a... I'll give him half of mine. I, he can have my four and a half, and I'll have the I want to know what love is half. Thanks, Deborah. I, I'm I donating mean, it to charity. It's the spirit of the age. It's the, Donate, I'm donating it to charity, and the charity is Craig. Thank you. But to, to go through that again, half of Deborah's point will be going to her, and half of it will be going to uh, Craig Parkinson. I love this question. Um, right. Lovely stuff. A charitable donation to Parkinson's UK. Um, now, question three. The answer was, I believe, Michael, Common People by Pulp. Craig, did you get Common People by Pulp? Yes, I did. Would you like to keep your whole point or give some of it to Deborah or Joe? I would like to ask Deborah if she would like half of my points for Pulp. Deborah. Babe, I do not need it because I also have a point. She's oh, already got that. it. And, and, oh, and Joe, well, you've, got, you've got it as well? I got it as well, yeah. A beautiful rendition which everyone deduced. Number four, the answer was... Fleetwood Mac. Everywhere. Oh, wow. It's in my top five favourites. I mean, Craig, bad news, I may need half a point because I thought it was Wasn't Me by Shaggy. Oh, for, do you know what? The fact that you thought that was Shaggy, it wasn't me. <laughs> I, 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 I would take half a point from you, Deborah, because of that. That, that is not in your remit. I that know, I'm just saying, well, as a quiz host... I mean, maybe... All I can say is, it wasn't me. <laughs> uh, and now, uh, Michael, what was the fifth song you played? Let's see on the screen. Yes. Oh, yes. It's real Slim Shady smash by Eminem. It's smashed, it's smashed, it's smashed, it. A very strong Eminem presence in this quiz. So I can't where does I got that... any points, any points. I thought I was going to get no points. I got loads. So happy. I've never been happier about any quiz, any round of any quiz. I got on my own, no team. I got music points. So excited. Music, it's like the Christmas of lockdown. It is the Christmas of lockdown. And like lockdown, it's never going to end. Today, we've got something a little different, um, which is our two guests, Nick and Joe, from the excellent Found Footage Festival, uh, or whose shows you may have caught uh, at the Edinburgh Festival in London or anywhere around the world. Um, they're going to show us some videos, and you need to decide what comes next. This round is five questions. There's a point for each. So let's say hello, first of all, to Nick and Joe. Hey, everybody. I'm Joe, and this is Nick. We do a show called the Found Footage Festival. And before the pandemic, we would go around to thrift stores and garage sales, and we would buy VHS tapes. But now during the pandemic, we have tons of time to actually watch these videos. For example, I've been watching uh, Royal Sperm, and uh, it's just as good as it sounds. Well, I'm looking forward to watching that. I, I was in the middle of Green Iguanas, the video guide to Karen breeding. But we're tearing ourselves away from all of that work to bring you a new show called What Happens Next, where we're going to show you five clips from some of our favorite VHS tapes, and you have to guess what happens next in the footage. Let's take a look at the first one. I'm flying. <laughs> I'm flying. This is Art Paul Schlosser. Are you flying? He's a street musician and artist from Madison, Wisconsin, and he has a public access show. And on his public access show, he has a segment where he paints with watercolors. So anyways, I'm painting. And people think I can't paint without water. And uh, this is going to be a little gross, but you might get <laughs> desperate sometime. And what bodily fluid does he use instead of water? And you might want to know what to do oh. if you get really desperate. Is it A, his own blood, B, his own urine, C, his own spit, or D, his own sweat. 
Oh, thank goodness. I feared worse multiple choice options than that. TBH, all great fluids. For question two, let's go back to Nick and Joe. Rent a friend. This is a real video produced in Chicago, Illinois, and it features a guy named Ben who offers to be your virtual friend for about 45 <laughs> batshit insane minutes. What's your name? <laughs> yeah. He asks you questions. Was your mother overprotective by any chance? Oh. He tells you yeah, about himself. Yeah, was I was infatuated with this one for like five, six years and never had a single date. And at one point, he tells this story. Here's another thing I used to do. I used to make this noise. Um, it's a noise that means I'm very excited and very, uh, very happy. What sound does he make when he's excited? And uh, I'd like to do it for you right now. A. <laughs> <laughs> B, yo, 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 yo. C, uh, uh, or is it D? Whee! A lot of fun to watch, and no doubt a lot of fun for you guys to write down. Which of those secure passwords are you going to be <laughs> locking in? <laughs> Solid laughter from the contestants there, but actually due to the lack of numbers or punctuation, they would all be quite insecure passwords. I'm happy to put my hand up when I'm saying something for banter. Uh, let's go back to Nick and Joe for question three. God damn son of a bitch! The Winnebago Man tape is a legendary tape-traded promotional video from the 90s featuring outtakes from an angry RV pitch man named Jack Rebney. Oh, fuck. Fuck. <laughs> fuck. 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 At one point during the shoot, Jack has a problem with flies. We got flies all over the fucking place. Get out of here, you fucking flies. Fuck out of here, you flies. What does he call one of them? Get out of here, you... Is it A, a stupid bastard, B, a dumb prick, <laughs> C, a daft wanker, or D, a goddamn jackass? <laughs> uh -oh. Oh my god, I love this so much. The, the full shows are a real treat. But oh somehow this god. sort of choose your own adventure vibe it gives it a whole another level. And of course we'll, we will be coming out to find out the answers. But we've got two more clips to get through. Question four. And now a video from your side of the pond. Mr. TSW was a televised beauty pageant for men what? broadcast in the southwest of England. The search is on to find Mr. TSW. And it featured 20 reluctant looking guys from all over the region. The host would introduce each of these men with a fact about them. <gasps> Number 17 is Glenn Richard. He's a laboratory technician. No. For this contestant named Christopher <laughs> Lee. The next contestant is number 13, Christopher Lee. He likes visiting auctions, gardening, photography. What cheeky fact will the host give him? A, he enjoys dressing up like Dracula. B, he recently had a problem with a new batch of gremlins. C, he just got back from a mission to Moscow. Or D, he's never fallen in love. Oh. <laughs> Great oh, this is a whole nother level. I'm sad it's going to be over soon. Let's have the final question. Here's the last one. We're going to show you the opening title sequence to a 1978 German porno with a fun title. Oh, my God. Oh, los. Hinterher. <laughs> what is that oh fun title? God. Is it A, <laughs> Playtime in the Park, B, Come Zurich, do Frisbee Dib. C, Frisbee Fuckers. Or D, The Story of Daphne. What is the 70s German porno title? You could really see that one expanding into a whole round next week. I feel I've rushed you through your previous answers. Maybe mull on this one for a couple of seconds more. And we will now, without any further ado, move on to the answers and their accompanying videos, which I hope will include some more footage from that exquisite looking adult film. Uh, Nick and Joe, let's take us through the answers. <laughs> so anyways, I'm painting and people think I can't paint without water. 
and uh, it was gonna be a little gross, but you might get desperate sometime. And yes, yes. Come on. you can take yes. some of your spit there, Perfect. and then you can paint. Down with. This is not always the best way to paint. Some people will think this is gross. It was his own spit. Yep. Question two. Here's another thing I used to do. I used to make this noise. Um, it's a noise that means I'm very excited and very, uh, very happy. What sound does he make when he's excited? And uh, I'd like to do it for you right now. I mean, isn't that nuts? The answer was B. Yo, yo, yo. Yes. And I hope you're expressing your excitement if you got it right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tom, what did you go for there? It was wee as opposed to yeah, 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 which is a real letdown for me. Yeah, I'm really sorry. I, thought, Thank you I, very much. I had an affinity with that guy. I really, I really did feel like he was my friend, and I thought that I kind of empathised with him and knew him, but I clearly not. Listen, Tom, you've touched on the you know I think central appeal of Found Footage Festival. Uh, the characters that they laser in on are laughable, but you still root for them. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a heart to it. Let's move on now to this. Swearing trucker. Question three. Get out of here, you goddamn jackass. It's a goddamn jackass. Take that, you stupid fly. Oh, dear. Rory Smith has been very quiet during this round. No, no I, went, I went for B. I thought, I thought the, the fly in question seemed like a dumb prick, to be honest. I just assumed that was the best description of its character. It was a goddamn jackass, yeah. Rory. And I, hope I you're see you all, man. Pain. Yeah. Question four. He likes visiting auctions, gardening, photography, dressing up as Dracula. And it's A, of course, Christopher Lee enjoys dressing up like Dracula. You can see it in his eyes. Cinder is still celebrating. She got I, that right. I, I, put, I put Dracula. <laughs> and Rory? Yeah, Dracula. It was on that How am I getting that? these ones wrong? This isn't even <laughs> knowledge now. This is just like... It's not what, knowledge. What, it's... How am I bad? They don't teach you this at school. You, just, you guys just clearly have better instincts as to what the weird friend guy and the strange naked man <laughs> from East Anglia does. That doesn't make me stupid, does it? I don't. Am I it stupid for not getting these it right? How are you getting them right? Come. Tom, this is as close as it gets to a, to a purely randomized round. This last one, I got... Please let me get this one right, man. Please. One last shot at redemption, Tom. Question five. I think what? I've got this wrong. <laughs> oh, close. Hit the here. This gives me pleasure. Yes. It's it's very very good good All right, that's it. Last question, right wins here. Yeah? Well played, guys. Well played. Sorry, that is just clearly, clearly with Frisbee fuckers. So if you didn't get that, oh, I feel a bit sorry for you, actually. Don't worry about it. Tom, I've spoken out of turn. That was the last question of the round, but we do have one more round in the okay. quiz. We'd all love, love to switch off our video conferences with the words Frisbee fuckers <laughs> ringing in our ears. But sadly, we first have to uh, do one more round. We're very quickly going to say goodbye to Nick and Joe and thank them for their contributions. Thank you very much, Nick and Joe. And that's our quiz. If you answered all these questions correctly, congratulations. We will immediately mail you this copy of Royal Sperm once I'm done with it. I'm not posting you green iguanas, though. You can forget about it. It's all mine. So thanks for playing, you goddamn jackasses. Bye. 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 We've had a long walk on the moors, and it's time to go home. What's the final round? It is a pictorial movies round based on Ghanaian film posters, which to quote from the Wikipedia page, have become noted for their imaginative, lurid, and outlandish art, often featuring characters, creatures, or other elements not present in the actual films they advertise. What a head right. fuck. Right. So we're going to see five of, these, five of these posters for films which feature things not in the films, and you're going to say, well, what is the film? A very <laughs> confusing round, but I'm quite excited about it. Let's see the first poster. <laughs> right, so this that's the like a dream I've had on acid. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, do you fall asleep on acid? Is it a point that it's just one long... Uh, Eventually sorry, I do. Very pedantic of me there, Ishan. Um, <laughs> sorry to tread on your lovely contribution. This one, it feels like there's one pretty major clue, one pretty major distraction, and then I must say, 
the Lock In Pub Quiz logo, which has been added in instead of the name of the film, rather than okay. the, the right. final twist in the Ghanaian film poster. Uh, <laughs> Ivo Graham pops up uh, in one of his father's oversized jackets halfway through the film, <laughs> which sadly we were unable to clear. Um, question two, let's have a look at the second poster. <laughs> 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 oh, very, very exciting stuff. Obviously, our first thought is Happy Gilmore, but is it Happy Gilmore? <laughs> I was very suspicious about Ghanaian film posters, but I'm now very excited to see the final three. Let's see the third. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Whoa. And we've got a little bit of writing there, and not just the lock in pub quiz writing, something about. Marriage, love, and protection. What film isn't about marriage, love, and protection? Jen, do you know what that is? You just wrote down. Feeling yeah. Like, do I you? Think, I, think I, so. think I know what that is too. Susie, I'm not your competitor, so this will be of little consolation, but it means absolutely nothing to me. <laughs> Good. Question four, here it is. Right. <laughs> 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 I mean, Very. that fox has got a great pair of knockers. <laughs> I don't know what yeah. I'm saying that. I love that. And thank God there's a gun as well, because that was missing from the original. <laughs> it was missing yeah. from the original, for sure. Well, you say the gun was missing from the original, Jenny, or it could be a completely different film which does feature a gun <laughs> and the bosomy uh, fox <laughs> and the basketball were what were missing from the film. We just can't know. It's hard to tell. Here is the fifth and final poster. Oh, it's best of the last. Oh, God. <laughs> yes. There's a lot going on there. Let's go through the answers, please. Um, the first one I think we can all agree was E.T. with mm. bonus Michael Jackson for no reason. Uh, do we all put E.T. by way of a collective thumbs up? Three thumbs up. Well, four if we include Jenny's very overconfident double. We move now to question... Two, what was the answer to this one? I'm going to have to check because I'm not entirely sure, but yes, it is. Uh, yes. Jurassic Park with much needed golf. I guess, um, I guess Caddyshack because I thought it might be the dinosaur. Oh, the sh oh Jenny. Um, I hate to hear that, but on the other hand, you were the only person who sounded confident with regards to film number three. So what did you put for oh, this one? I had one? a guess for that, yeah. I think it's um, Ghost. It is Ghost. Oh, I put The Exorcist. Uh, no. Do you know what? The names are in the corner. Molly, uh, Sam was murdered. He told uh, Molly he'd love and protect her. Well, no, because also um, I think that chap does look a bit like Patrick Swayze. But she doesn't look a lot like Demi Moore. She doesn't look like Demi Moore at all, yeah. <laughs> yes, if you're Demi Moore at Snappy Snaps picking up that photo, you've got to think that something's gone horribly wrong. Yes, she looks like Demi right. Moore. You know that episode of Friends where they tried to cut her hair like Demi Moore and they did Dudley Moore? Yes. She yeah. looks yes. like Dudley yes. Moore. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic reference. Now, Jenny, um, you looked earlier at a picture of a dinosaur and decided to go for a golf-based film. Mm. I'm going to ask what you did now with this uh, poster for what is clearly Space Jam. Did you put Space I Jam? Did. I did put Space Jam, yes. I'm so very pleased. <laughs> is, it not, is it not straight out of Compton? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, And question five, Susie? Mrs. Doubtfire. A very X-rated, oh, superbly violent Mrs. Doubtfire. No one puts anyone's... That, that's so yeah. graphic, isn't it? That, it's so, yeah. The old, oh. the old thing in the eye. It's got the intention of the film. Sorry, harking back to Caddyshack. Um, what I find <laughs> interesting, I can understand why why people would think, do you know what, this is a boring film about golf, let's throw a dinosaur in. But I don't see what throwing a man playing golf in adds to an already excellent dinosaur film. Jenny, you are not getting a point for Caddyshack and you're okay. coming across as desperate. <laughs> so, <laughs> and a final thank you to you, of course, if you have watched this or indeed played along at home. Uh, we are here every week with new contestants and new questions. And if you particularly enjoyed it, uh, please consider making a donation, uh, let's say the price of a pint, to our charity partner, the Music Venues Trust, uh, and specifically their Save Our Venues campaign, an absolutely crucial one in these 
Troubled Times. Uh, you can find uh, their bio and more about the campaign um, underneath this video. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Good night. All I crave is a good pub feed.